Naam, mtazamaji kama ilivyo ada kila siku ya Ijumaa kuanzia saa tatu hadi saa nne saa za Afrika Mashariki wakati rasmi wa kuweza kupanda kwenye jukwaa la Magwiji. Hapa tutakizungumzia Magwiji mbali katika soka la Kenya na pia nje ya Kenya. Almradi kuweza kujua safari zao kwenye soka na kwenye mchezo pia kwa imani hapa leo najumika naye Sami Owino Kempes. Kempes samaji lake la utani manake pia barani Afrika mtazamaji kwamba kumekuwa na hulka na tabia ya jaji kadhaa kubandiko majina ya wachezaji kutoka kule Ugaibu nazungumzia mtu kama vile eh, striker wa taifa la Uingere kule Misri nazungumzia Mahamud Ahmed Ibrahim Hassan ambaye kwa jina la utani anaitwa Trezege akikopa jina kutoka kwa David Trezege kutoka kwa Faransa Leble lakini pia beki wa taifa wa Kenya Harambe Stars Eric Ouma akiitwa jina Marcelo ambaye ni beki kushoto wa timu ya taifa ya Brazil zamani akiwa Real Madrid lakini pia ni kwamba Mosa wa Misri akiitwa Messi wa Misri na kadhalika lakini pia Mario Kempes Huyu alikuwa striker wa timu ya taifa ya Argentina na alifungia Argentina magoli mengi sana alikadhalika pia kushinda kombe la dunia la mwaka 1978 na pia alikuwa mfungaji bora wa ligi ya La Liga ya Hispania mara mbili alifunga magoli 3322 katika mechi yake za jumla za klabu na pia mechi za timu ya taifa akiwa na mechi 598 bila shaka jina hilo Kempes ndilo alilopatiwa Sami Owino ambaye anawania kiti cha urais katika shirikisho la soka humu nchini mwaka ujao mwaka 2024 Sami Owino ambaye zamani alikuwa mchezaji timu taifa ya Kenya Harambe Stars lakini pia aliwahi kucheza pia klabu ya Gor Mahia Karibu sana Sami Owino Kempes kwenye kipindi cha jukwaa la Magwiji mimi jina langu ni Jason Sagini the Sports Archbishop Karibu sana Sami Owino jinsi nyumbani kwanza kabisa Ah nashukuru sana Asante sana kwa kunipatia hii fursa ya kujitambulisha na vile vile kuzungumza kuhusu hali ya mpira Kenya. Uh, na shukuru sana. I send pia asante sana kuweza kutenga muda manake si jambo rahisi kutenga muda manake bila shaka kwamba mgeni wetu kwa leo Sami Owino yuko kule maeneo ya Marekani manake uh, he is a US best uh, Kenyan manake ni kwamba kwamba zamani alikuwa kwa klabu ni Gor na pia timu ya taifa ya Stars lakini kwamba kwa yule mtu ambaye kujini kwamba leo tunakwenda kuzungumzia manake ulitangaza wiki zichache zipata kwamba utakuwa na wania kiti cha urais katika shirikisho la soka humu nchini Kenya FKF mwaka ujao katika uchaguzi wa mwaka 2024 mwezi Februari kabla kuzamia hapo tutaanza kuzungumza basi mtu ambaye hakujui aweze kufahamu who is Sami Owino Kempes alizaliwa wapi alelewa wapi na pia labda e, malengo yake kuweza kuingia katika soka la Kenya ni gani pia labda kuweza kujua hii safari ya kuwania kiti cha urais ilianzaje na pia labda yapi magina ambayo uko nayo ambayo hatujaweza kuyaona kwa marehemu amepita hapo zamani. Kwa hiyo mwanzo kabisa anza tu kufahamisha kwa kifupi nani Sami Uyo nani kwa kifupi tu. Ya mimi kwa jina naitwa jina zangu zote ni Sami Uyo Olali. Uh, olali ni jina babangu. Kama watu wengi wananijua kama Kempes. Kwa hivyo mara nyingi nikisema Sami Olali hapa nyumbani huwa watu wanifahamu lakini hapa Amerikani watu wanajua kama Sami Olali. Nikisema Sami Owino Kempes ndio watu wananifahamu. Kwa hivyo mimi naitwa Sami Owino Kempes. Uh, nili uh, zaliwa Pumwani Hospital. Alafu nililelewa hapo Ziwani na niliwahi kuchezea uh, timu uh, timu ya umeme na nilipokuwa hapo Ziwani alafu nikaenda nikachezea Olympic Youth Center. Alafu baadaye nikachezea Gormaya alafu nikachezea ya timu ya taifa Kenya. Um, nilipokuwa kijana nilikwenda St Bridges alafu vile vile nikaenda high school nikaenda Nairobi Technical alafu ndio baadaye nika, nikapata scholarship ya kuja hapa uh, kucheza uh, kwa university uh, nilisomea electrical engineering nikapata degree ya electrical engineering alafu baadaye baada ya hapo nika, nikafanya kazi kwa corporate world uh, alafu baadaye nika, nika, nikarudia mambo ya mpira alafu nikanunua professional team alafu kijana wangu alipofika umri ya kucheza ndio nikaanzisha akademi yangu hapa uh-huh. kwa hivyo kwa sababu kama unamiliki akademi ya michezo huko nchini Marekani kwamba hayo yatakuja baadaye lakini katika taaluma yako ya soka umetaja kwamba ulichezea vilabu kadhaa ikiwemo Luo Union Gormahia Reunion na pia timu taifa Rambe Stars. Labda unaweza kunitajia watu ambao waweza kushape kariya yako ya soka. Those people who kind of played a crucial role 
in shaping a career just three of them yeah unajua ni watu ukiwa una maisha yani ukiwa una unaendelea katika maisha yako ni watu wengi wao wana shape uh, uh, life yako in general lakini katika hali ya mpira uh, mimi nasema Alan Tigo uh, ali ali ni influence sana uh, ali ali shape uh, my career vile vile ali, ali nipatia nafasi ya kuja kuchezea Gor Mahia alafu uh, mara kwanza kaka bench ili niweze kucheza ilikuwa ni mimi peke yangu ni, ambaye nilikuwa naweza kuvaa namba yake vile vile George Ongo ali maremu George Ongo um, ali ni ali ni encourage sana nilipokuwa nikicheza ali nita katika timu ya wakati huo kulikuwa Nairobi province na nakumbuka nikichezea Nairobi province na nikiwa nikiwa nime nimeanza tu kuchezea timu ya Lionel hapo kulikuwa na wachezaji ambao mimi nilikuwa naona wako hali ya juu sana nakumbuka half time akiniambia hey nyinyi mbona msicheze kama Samuel Wino ile ni encourage sana mm-hmm. alafu Marshall Marshall Molu pia ni mtu ambaye mimi ninamheshimu sana um, ni, ni mtu ambaye hata maisha yake uh, kwa jumla alivyo uh, mimi namheshimu sana ni, nilimjua vizuri sana nilipokuwa national team alifanya kazi nzuri tulifaulu sana sasa hao ndio watu tatu ambao ni, ni wengi lakini hao tatu mimi naheshimu sana Mhm. Naam, na tuseme kwamba Kongole sana maana walifanya kazi kubwa ya kulea kipaji ambacho kimekuja kuwa kipaji kizuri na sasa hivi kinawania kuwa kiongozi mkuu ama rais mkuu wa shirikisho la soka humu nchini Kenya FKF kwa mwaka ujao. Lakini Sami umetaja kwamba kule Marekani kwa sasa unamiliki chuo cha soka kiitwacho ACES na labda uweze kuniambia ulipoelekea kule Marekani, ulielekea kule Marekani kwa minaji rasmi ya soka ama ulipelekwa kule kwa kitu tofauti? Marekani nilikuja kwa sababu ya masomo. Uh, wajua siku zile nilikuwa nikicheza uh, nafasi ya kwenda kucheza ngambo haikuwa haikuweko. Ilikuweko lakini ilikuwa ndogo sana. Ilikuwa ni vigumu sana mchezaji kwenda kucheza ngambo. Sasa mara nyingi sisi kama wachezaji ilikuwa tunategemea kazi ambayo unapewa na ilikuwa ni lazima kama unajua mpira ni unacheza mpaka Uh, mali fulani ala, amba, uh, ukifika kama miaka 30 ni kama umecheza zaidi sana. Kwa hiyo lazima ufikirie ni maisha yako baada ya mpira sio. Hiyo ni kitu nilikuwa ilikuwa kichwa ni kwangu na mimi nilikuwa kila mara ninaiweka ni, ni uh, hapo mbele kwa sababu nilijua kombe kifika mali fulani uh, mamangu pia alikuwa akinikumbusha. Alikuwa ananiambia unajua siku zako za mpira zitakusha alafu utafanya okay. Kwa hivyo ni, ni kitu nilikuwa na sasa nilipo baada hiyo nafasi ya kuja hapa kusoma ngambo nilichukua. Alafu nikaja hapa kwa sababu ya masomo, ni yangu ilikuwa ni kurudia nyumbani, kurudi nyumbani kucheza lakini mambo ikageuka. Sasa baada ya kumaliza shule nikapata hiyo nafasi ya kwenda kufanya my masters. Alafu nikafanya masters, alafu kafika wakati umefika umri ambapo umemaliza masters unaangalia ah, nikija kucheza niweze niende niendelee kucheza mpira ama niangalie mambo ya maisha yangu. Kwa hivyo uh-huh. mimi ni decide kwamba nimalizana na mpira niangalie future yangu. Hebu e, hebu tufafanulie kwa undana kukina manake e, chuo katika chuo kikuu hichi ambacho umekianisha cha soka akademia michezo kule Marekani. Hebu tufafanulie ufanye ngada uh-huh. sasa umefikia viwango gani? Tell us more what you've done in the US and uh, at the moment. Mbona kimepata umaarufu mkubwa katika shule hiyo ya soka? Unajua mimi mimi maisha yangu hata nikiwa nikiwa bado uh, kijana mimi kitu ambao mimi naona ni kwamba kila kitu ambayo unafanya lazima uwe na vision vision ama maono sio usipo kuwa na vision hauwezi kwenda mali mimi nilipo nilipoambiwa nilipokuwa wajua nilikuwa kijana wangu alikuwa anachezea Uh, alikuwa mdo alipokuwa mdogo alikuwa anacheza tunaita hapa recreational soccer maana uh, uh-huh. watu ambao unaanzia ndio mahali unaanzia unaanzia uh-huh. recreational soccer maana ni kwamba unaichezea tu uh, haijalishi kama umeshinda ama umeshindwa ni, ni kitu unacheza kwa sababu kupenda kwako lakini kuna ile level nyingine ambayo inaitwa competitive soccer sasa ilivyokuwa hapa ilipofika umri ya kucheza 
hiyo competitive soccer ilianza kuangalia ni, ni club gani nitaweza kumpeleka alafu nilipoangalia nipo nikaona ah hizi vilabu wazifanyi kazi vizuri nikaenda kila mara nilikuwa nampeleka naangalia kwa sababu nilikuwa na ile ile experience ya kuchezea Olympic Youth Center watu wengi hawajui Olympic Youth Center ni nini lakini Olympic Youth Center ilikuwa ni ni uh, program moja ilianzishwa kule nyumbani na wajerumani kuna yu kocha alikuwa anaitwa Bernard Gold uh, kutokana na usaidizi wa serikali ya ujerumani ambao walikuja Kenya wakaanzisha hizi Olympic Youth Center moja ikaanzishwa Nairobi ingine ikaanzishwa Nakuru alafu ingine ikaanzishwa Mombasa sasa mimi nilikuwa na na nafasi ya kule ya, ya kuchaguliwa na nikaenda nikachezea hiyo Olympic Youth Center sasa nilikuwa na idea ya vile uh, youth program ina inakuwa inakuwa ina 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 iwe run kwa hivyo nilipokuja hapo nilikuwa na idea sasa nilipoangalia huko na pale nikaona ah easy easy uh, programs tunazo hapa mimi naweza kufanya vizuri ku, ku, ku kushinda ninaviona sasa ndivyo hivyo nilivyoanza sasa mimi nikaanzisha yangu na kutoka hapo tukajiendeleza mpaka saa hizi program yetu iko ranked one of the best in the country hmm. naam hadi sasa kwenye chuo hicho cha soka cha ASS una wachezaji wangapi na umefikia wapi kwenye tuseme miundo misingi infrastructure kwenye chuo hicho cha soka yeah tuko kwa wachezaji uh, 600 sita. Uh-huh. Uh, sisi kitu ambayo ilikuwa muhimu kwangu ni kwamba uh, nilipokuwa na, 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 na nataka kwanza ni kwamba ni lazima ilikuwa ni lazima tuwe na ile physical infrastructure la manake tuwe na viwanja uh, na tumejenga viwanja saizi ambazo ni nzuri sana sisi uh-huh. ndio pengine klabu chache hapa zina viwanja kama hitu uh, tuko na uh, uh, tulifanya uh, deal na city moja hapa tukajenga wakatupatia ikari na nane tukai develop sasa tuna viwanja sita tuna ofisi hapo tuko na zile structures ambazo zinahitajiwa mahali ambapo watu wanakaa tukiwa na mechi wanaona alafu na vile vile nilinunua uh, ekari uh, 32 pia na uh, plan yangu ni ku develop ni kuwe iwe na stadium vile vile na viwanja sita alafu na shule na alafu kuna nyingine pia tunajenga uh, tunajenga uh, tunajenga uh, tumefanya deal na kanisa wakatupatia land so kwa hivyo tuna develop pia tunajenga artificial turf hiyo inaendelea pia Uh, kwa hivyo kujenga mimi naona kujenga nini academy inahitaji vitu vingi sana si ati wachezaji kuja peke yake na kufundishwa lazima uwe na infrastructure ya sio physical infrastructure peke yake vile vile uwe na ile uh, uh, maendeleo ya vijana na vile vile maendeleo uh, kufundisha makocha vile vile okay. na ile scouting pia kwa hivyo ni vitu vingi zina 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 nini zinatakikana ukitaka kujenga akademi nzuri. Naam, nisome jumbe fupi kabla ya kuenda mbali kujitumia katika mjadala wa kuzungumzia uaniaji wako kura wa shirikisho la soka kama rais na hapa namuona kwenye comment section Gift Center anasema wishing him well. Asante pia namuona Richard Oya anasema kwamba great. Alafu Idris Mwashumbe anasema Eldama Ravin is watching anaeleza kwamba how will he improve players welfare atajibu hilo baadaye kidogo lakini Richard Owi anasema wishing him well asante McDonald Obuzo anasema this is a great man asante sana anasema kwamba uh, let the Kenyan soccer be headed by professionals alafu Leonard eh, Enzo Veli anasema CFA Kericho chair wishing him well alafu Carol Ogalo anasema proud of you asante sana kwa kabizoni hizo zidi kutuma maswali yako na pia ujumbe wako kwenye comment section hapo nitausoma nikipata muda kipindi wani ni jukwa la magwiji ndani ya walk with sagini live ukiwa nami Jason Sagini mgeni kwa leo akiwa ni Sami Owino Kempes anayewania kuwa rais wa shirikisho la soka nchini Kenya FKF mwaka ujao ifikapo Februari kwenye uchaguzi wa mwaka 2024 tuangalie sasa 
uh, kuzamia kuwania kiti cha urais. Manake miezi mine iliyopita bwana Sami ulikuwa umetangaza kwa unania ya kujenga na kuanzisha shule ya soka humu nchini Kenya. Hadi sasa mpaka imefikia manake mkoa fanya kazi kwa moja mkiwa na Sami Sholei. Hadi sasa hadi sasa imefikia maeneo gani katika kuanzisha shule hiyo ya soka hapa nchini Kenya? Unajua kitu cha kwanza hiyo 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 uh hiyo plan ya kuanzisha academy ni, ni plan ambayo nilikuwa nao tangu zamani sana. Nilikuwa na tatizo hapa na pale lakini ni sio ni kitu nimeanzisha sasa hizi. Niliangalia sehemu kadhaa nilipokuwa nikija hapo nyumbani niliko, niliangalia land opportunity ya kuanzisha kule Ngong. Um Hebu nisameni niweke hii ya ni, niliangalia uh, uh, possibility ya kuanzisha hapo Ngong kuna wakati ambapo nilikuwa nataka uh, nianzishe kule uh, Kisumu wakati fulani nilikuwa naangalia Kisumu lakini vision yangu ilikuwa ni mahali ambapo kutakuwa na, na nini activities nyingi number one. alafu vile vile nilikuwa nataka nianzishe uh, mali ambapo Uh, naweza kuanzisha hotel hoteli pia uh, ambapo naweza kualika tourist pia kwa sababu unajua kila kitu ambao unaanzisha lazima ufikirie ni financing itakuwa vipi ukianzisha kitu alafu hauwezi ku sustain itakuwa ni shida kwa hivyo mimi kitu nikianzisha kitu cha kwanza najiuliza ni 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 vile naweza ku sustain kwa hivyo uh, nilipoangalia mwisheni kaseto uh-huh kajiaro nikaona shamba moja mzuri sana ekari uh, 40 uh, tukainunua kwa hivyo tumemaliza hiyo process ya kununua shamba tumefinalize sasa kwa hivyo hiyo ni, ni ile uh, milestone ya kwanza ni, ni kununua kwa hivyo tumemaliza hiyo ya pili kuna unajua kuna steps ambazo ni lazima uchukue kwa sababu uh, kuna ile infrastructure inaitajiwa kama kuleta vitu kama sitima maji designing kwa hivyo kuna steps ambazo unahitaji lakini sasa ambapo niko niko kwa ile stage ya ku design niko na idea ninafanya na mtu ambaye ana designia nita unveil hiyo karibuni um, alafu tutaendelea kuanzia hapo kila la heri katika ujenzi huo wa shule hii ya soka bwana Sami lakini nao into serious matters that are into uh, elections come next year february Bwana Sami, what makes you see yourself as the best to become the FKF president uh, next year to inherit Nick Mwendwa? You know me I think I have the experience. I have I have all the prerequisites ambazo zinahitajiwa. Una uh, ukiangalia hali ya mpira Kenya, hatuko na infrastructure. Hiyo ni kitu nimewahi kufa ninafanya sasa hizi. Nimewahi kujenga infrastructures atuna youth development instant fracture hiyo ni kitu nimefanya miaka mingi za, uh, zaidi hatuna coaching education infrastructure hiyo ni kitu nimefanya muda mrefu sana kwa hivyo mimi naona na ni kwamba niko na na ile zile ujuzi zote ambazo inahitajiwa uh, um, kuendeleza mpira nyumbani kwa hivyo uh, ukinilinganisha uki mimi na watu ambao wamekuwa hapo in the past ama watu ambao wana wana vai for your election sasa hizi alafu angalie experience yetu ama ujuzi wetu utaona kwamba mimi vile ninavyoona kuna mtu ambaye ana ujuzi kama mimi ambaye anaweza kuendeleza hali ya mpira uh-huh. na sisi mimi kwa madarao ehe ndio <laughs> right mm-hmm. na unapotaja kwamba una uwezo wa kujenga viwanja yani infrastructure do you mean you will come in and sort out the infrastructure issue that we have currently that our clubs uh, majorly hatuna viwanja vingi una huo uwezo labda unajua kuna 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 different levels of infrastructure vile mimi naona uh-huh. kuna ile national level is like, kama ile tuna tunaongea mambo ya afcon sio uh-huh. zile stadiums ambazo zinahitajiwa hizo ni kazi za serikali hiyo ni uh-huh. lazima serikali jenge hiyo lakini kuna ile infrastructure ya viwanja ambazo tunaweza kujenga ambazo zinahitajiwa na za kufanya mazoezi na timu zetu za Premier League for example na vile vile infrastructure viwanja ambazo 
uh, vijana wetu wanahitaji ili waweze kuninua kufanya mazoezi na kucheza mpira kwa hivyo mimi naona kuna level mbili za infrastructure level ya kwanza ni ile national level infrastructure ambayo uh, inafanyika na serikali na vile vile hata vile unavyojua ukiangalia hali ya tukiangalia hiyo infrastructure ya level ya juu ukiangalia vile tulivyo saizi yeah. alafu angalia hali ya viwanja at that level uh, tuko vibaya sana sio na mimi naona kwamba nina ujuzi ambao naweza kukuleta tu bea nitafanya kazi na serikali na kama head of football in Kenya kwa ku make sure kwamba tukifanya repairs ama tukijenga kwamba ninaweka input ambayo anaweza kusaidia kwa vile nini kuna experience ambayo inatarajiwa kuna problems ambazo uh, ziko deep kama vile ufisadi for example kwa sababu unajua kitu ina ina inatuharibia ina, ina nchi ni kwamba uh, ata serikali kipya na pesa stadi imejengwe kuna ile issue ya ufisadi kwa hivyo unaweza kuwa pesa iko lakini zinaibiwa sio kwa hivyo inataki kwamba kwamba watu ka, mtu ambaye atakuwa president of football Kenya federation uh-huh. atakuwa na some say najua serikali itakuwa na full say lakini atakuwa na samse na ukiwa na experience itasaidia katika hiyo process. Na uh, ningependa kufahamu uhusiano wako na rais wa sasa wa FKF Nick Mwendwa ni upi? What's your relationship with the current FKF president Nick Mwendwa and maybe uh, what are some of the things already put in place you feel need to be changed in the FKF at the moment? Kuna jora ni kitu gani needs to be changed? everything needs to be changed so that, i mean where do we start <laughs> yeah i think that the issue is what does not need to be changed i think that's probably even a, a shorter question no nick uh, sina problem na nick uh, nick ni mtu amekuja ame 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 serve time zake mbili um na eh, unajua mimi nampa credit what credit is due unajua kitu ambacho nampa ni credit ni kwamba kwa kulingana na mambo ya 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 nini coaching education ame, amefanya vizuri vile vile ni lazima unajua sisi saa zingine tunalaumu 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 watu kila mara na lakini hatuwapi credit lakini vile vile um, najua hakushughulisha uh, sana hakushughulika sana na hii mambo ya afcon lakini lazima tumpe credit pia alifanya uh, responsibility zake kama football Kenya Federation president. Kwa hivyo tutamlaumu na vile vile tumpe credit. Kwa hivyo hiyo Afcon bid sisi kupata hiyo Afcon bid uh, vile vile tunampa credit. Lakini kwa jumla kwa jumla kazi ambayo amefanya sio mzuri. Na ukiniuliza ni kitu gani ni lazima tu change mimi nasema kila kitu kila kitu kwa sababu credibility ya football Kenya Federation uh, size ni mbaya sana imefika wakati ambapo hata corporations zina confidence ya kupatia pesa FIFA ina confidence na sisi lakini mimi usema hivi unajua mimi ikija mambo ya ku criticize watu unajua sote tunajua problems of FKF unajua mimi Ndiyo. badala ya kushughulikia hiyo mambo ya mambo yao siku zao zimekwisha najua kitu na nitatiza ni kwa unajua binadamu tuko tuko very interesting unajua kama ni mwendo ame, amefanya kazi mbaya lakini anataka kubaki ofisini nyamwea huyo amerudi nyamwea ukimuuliza nyamwea kazi gani ulifanya yeye akizungumza unafikiria amefa, alifanya kazi nzuri lakini sisi sote tunajua alifanya kazi mbaya sana sio kwa hivyo unajua binadamu tunajidanganya pengine tuko na ile ability ya kujidanganya kwamba sisi tunafanya kazi nzuri lakini kila mtu anajua tunafanya kazi kazi vibaya kwa hivyo mimi naona siku za mwendo zimekwisha nyamoya inafaa kai pole pole kule kando mambo ya mpira asiachane nayo kabisa kwa hivyo ni watu ambao hatutaki hatutaki waje karibu na, na mambo ya mpira mm-hmm. uh, nam, nam, uh, definitely at the moment some Uh, there is a lack of trust by stakeholders as you mentioned and a sense of hopelessness from both players and fans hence 
there is the need to turn on a new chapter and one of the chapters that fans keep on asking because last week nilikuwa katika kongamano la kibiashara la soka barani Africa lilondaliwa na the football foundation for africa chini ya ceo Brian Wesala na moja wapo ya mambo yalizunguzwa pale ni katika mambo ya ukuaji and how to strengthen our local leagues one of the guys from egypt uh, he's a ceo for data company hebu unaweza kurudia sana pole sana unaweza kurudia swali yako isimu nimeita nime turn off nimeita turn off pole all right nafuna tumeona nisikia sikusikizi kuna nisikia nipata ndio sasa kwa vizuri yeah yeah hebu anisha swali kwamba at the moment there is a lack of trust by stakeholders and a sense of hopelessness from both players and the fans hence there is the need to turn on a new chapter and uh, wiki mbili zimepita nilikuwa katika kwa la kibiashara yani a football business summit in africa that was organized by the football foundation for africa and one of the topics that was discussed there was how to strengthen our local leagues one guy from egypt anaitwa mohammed el badri ambaye ni ceo mkurugenzi wa kampuni ya data ya Cora Stats alisema kwamba there is the need to make sure that the federation doesn't run the league hence you need to have a separate company which runs the league so in your own opinion as an FKF aspirant presidential aspirant do you think it will be nice for you to return KPL limited company to run the league yeah that's a, that to me is a possibility problem problem even now ni, ni it's it's not who runs the league as much as that the person who runs the league not what knows what they are doing unajua ukianza federation federation ina ina so many things ambazo inafanya sio kwa hivyo kuna vitu ambazo mimi nasema federation ni kama serikali sio kuna zile vitu ambazo unafanya vizuri ni lazima utambue alafu kuna zile vitu ambazo ni vizuri uki outsource sio lakini hata uki outsource lazima uwe na hiyo uh, hiyo company ama organization ambayo ume outsource iwe na accountability kwa hivyo mimi um, nakubaliana kwamba league ni vizuri ikiwa run na watu ambao wanajua kitu wanafanya federation the current federation na wako equipped ku run league kwa sababu hata vitu ambazo wanafaa wafanye awafanye vizuri. Kwa hivyo uh, mimi nakubaliana ni vizuri kama uh, an outside feder- an outside organization inaweza kurun lakini it is important kwamba wawe accountable. Kwa hivyo kazi ya federation ni kumake sure kwamba uh-huh. waki run league wa, wa Iran vizuri. Lakini ukiwa unaweza kuwa na uh, and in asema in house meaning within the federation unaweza kuanzisha uh, a department ambayo ina run league the problem ni kwamba kama hakuna competency kama hakuna ujuzi uh, itakuwa run improperly unajua kwa hivyo mimi sio ni kama issue ni ni, ni kama league iwe run na an outside organization ama within football federation kitu muhimu ni kwamba the way you run it is properly run ideally mm-hmm. it would be nice come i could run with an outside organization as long as kuna accountability mm-hmm. uh, now another topic that was discussed in that uh, summit ni kuhusu kufanya mpira ama soka kuwa kama biashara manake football is a business also because people come here to invest when you run for sponsors and you run for uh, broadcasting deals they are in business but at the moment soka letu bwana sam si biashara tena manake hatuna wadhamini hatuna opportunity michoano katika runinga na pia kidogo imekuwa ni vigumu kuweza kuwa convince eh, mashirika ya kiserikali kuweza kuingia na kuwekeza katika soka la Kenya now i want to know how do you intend to take our football to the business level when you take over the city next year that is such an important question nafikiria nilipo nilipo kwa na decide ku kuingilia katika i uh, bidding ya presidency the first thing nilijiuliza ni kumbuka swali ya kwanza uliponiuliza nilipokuwa ninaanzisha academy kile cha kwanza nilijiuliza ni vile unaweza ku sustain can you sustain it unajua hiyo ni swali muhimu sana sana football in kenya football in general sio kenya peke yake ukiangalia 
ulimwengu mzima football ina opportunity kubwa sana ya kuleta pesa nyingi sana lakini kitu ambayo inahitajiwa ni kwamba lazima kuwe na the right people number one. lazima kwamba kuwe na watu ambao wana vision lazima kuwa na watu wako competent ambao wanajua kitu wanafanya na kuwe na watu ambao really care about football the problem ni kwamba saa hizi ukiangalia hali ya mpira ya Kenya hata sio saa hizi pekee yake ukienda um, mbali kidogo kule nyuma kidogo utaona kwamba wengi ambao 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 wanachaguliwa ku run football uh, nyumbani ni watu namba moja ni watu ambao hawajali kuhusu mambo ya mpira ukiangalia historia yao ukiangalia hawajali wao wanakuja ida wanataka ku gain political mileage ama wengi wao wanakuja ni kama sisi ni stepping stone wengine wanakuja kuiba pesa wengine wanakuja wanakuja kwa kwa sababu ya uh, ya, ya nini reasons to fault to fault lakini wengi wengi wao hawana vision hawana competence hawana uwezo wa, wa kuinua hali ya mpira kwa hivyo kitu wa problem ambayo tunayo mimi naona problem kubwa 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 ambayo tuna ni kitu inaitwa elections na sisi culturally mimi nasema culturally kama as a country mimi nitasema hii na kuna watu watasikia bye lakini mimi nasema nafikiria ni ukweli ni lazima tujiangalie wenye tujiulize kama wa Kenya ni kitu gani tunataka vijana wetu nafasi gani tu, uh, ni kitu gani tunataka uh, ikilingana na mpira tutule tu ninio tupatie vijana nafasi am, am, ambao tutajenga mpira ya yeah, itafika kiwango ambapo mpira itajenga hali ya vijana itawapatia nafasi ya kwenda kucheza uh, 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 inchi za ngambo ama kuwa professionals nyumbani itapatia nafasi ya kwenda kupata masomo kama mimi kama kama siko sababu ya mpira mimi singe singepata masomo ambayo nilipata mpira imenisaidia sana maisha yangu nikajiendeleza mimi mwenyewe maisha yangu kwa hivyo corruption inatuharibia sasa elections zinakuja unajua kuna wananchi ambao wana, wanapiga kura si ndio wana complain oh ni kimwendo aliingia alafu kuna uh, uh, nyamwea for example watu walituharibia mpira sana lakini mimi nauliza watu ambao wanapiga kura kutokea grassroots level kutokea premier league teams nsl teams hizo au wote ambao wana wana nini responsibility kupea kitu na wauliza mbona wana ruhusu wana ruhusu wawe corrupted hiyo ni swali muhimu sana alafu namba two, kitu cha muhimu ni kwamba sisi kama wananchi wa Kenya ni lazima tusiwaruhusu hawa watu wa football Kenya federation wa corrupt elections kwa sababu bila, bila elections ya uaminifu i mean uh-huh. it, kitu nafanyika ni kwamba tutapata the same people four years from now tutazotukua tukizungumza about the same thing kwa yeah. lazima sisi sote sisi sote tukiwa tuna care about e football ni lazima tupigane na jamaa tuondoe ofisini tulete watu ambao wana wana care about football mm. but, but 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 Sam uh, what guarantees that nyinyi mkiingia na kuondoa ambao walikuepo kwamba nao our football will become or will enter the business level kwa sababu tuna mimi nina historia sio nina historia ya kuchukua mpira kuigeuza biashara biashara yangu ni biashara mpira sio <laughs> nimejenga infrastructure ambayo nina monetize opportunity ni kubwa sana kitu ina lack ni ukiingia katika hiyo ofisi unafanya kazi na ministry unafanya kazi na fifa unafanya kazi na stakeholders sio uh-huh. lazima u build relationships Mam, ya kwanza ni lazima u build relationship ya pili ni lazima wa, lazima waku, wawe na kuwe na level ya trust kwa hivyo kuwa uh-huh. trusted unatakikana uwe u prove kwamba you are worthy of a trust alafu mambo ya tatu ni kwamba ni mara nyingi sisi ni tuna, tuna, tuna behave ni kama masikini tuna, tunaomba kila mara tunataka tupewe kitu mimi nasema hiyo kitaka ku na corporate world 
kama mm-hmm. mimi vile na deal na wao ni lazima u offer value maana mm-hmm. ni kwamba si ati useme hey mimi ni football kenya federation nipatie sponsorship lazima uwe na offer kitu ambao uende kwa uambie ukinipatia pesa hizi mimi nitakufanyia hivi alafu vile vile lazima uondoe ufisadi kwa sababu ukipata pesa alafu ku reinvest back hautaweza ku build hiyo nini hiyo hiyo a federation ama football to the level ambao watu wa nje wata, wata, wataweza kuninio kuwapatia pesa zaidi uh, zimefanyika kila mari Morocco is a good example sio Morocco imeweza kuchukua football from one level wakaipandisha mpaka sasa hizi ukiona Morocco imeinuka sana kwa ile mpira hiyo Tanzania is another example ukiangalia okay, Tanzania Tanzania wameinua uh, hali ya mpira makosa ni kwamba tunaleta watu ambao hawaelewi hawaelewi vile wanaweza hawana vision hawajui ni vipi ina itawabidi wafanye ndio wa nini wa wa professionalize football hiyo ndio problem yetu na tukitaka kugoza ni lazima tu elect watu ambao wanaelewa watu ambao wako na, na proven record ya kuinua uh-huh. hali ya mpira ndio Mhm. Naam, acha nisome jumbe mbili tatu za mashabiki maana pia wana maswali yao hapa na wengine wanajiunga nasi. Na muona hapa engineer Otieno Ogara anasema keep up you are up to the task. Sante sana. Pia namuona mama Diof anasema anafuatilia kwa umakini kwa ajili ya soka ya kina dada. Nitakuja hapo muda si mrefu kuzungumzia soka la kina dada pia lakini pia McDonald Obudo anasema it's time we entrust leadership with those who have been tested over time not soccer brokers. Alafu la Joan Gardens anasema I believe that you are capable of taking football to a greater level if given a chance to lead soccer in Kenya. Lakini pia namuona hapa bila shaka namuona pia Andrew Mutungwa yuko ndani bila kumsahau Taso Kefa anasema all the best schoolmate and may you the, your vision for Kenya come tr- uh, true. Pia namuona hapa Sami Sholei anasema eh, Sami we know the best option in Kenyan football. Asante sana pia namuona Fabian Mwiti anasema watching live from Lavington lakini pia Silver Ghost anasema following uh, Ghost nikiwa ndani asante sana Faisal Festo anasema kwamba Mombasani inafuatilia mpango mzima asante kwa kutuma kauli yako now i want to talk about uh, governance because governance is one of the biggest issue because running for the FKF seat alone itself is part of the governance now our governance levels in Africa not only in Kenya are so down and one of also the things that are making our football leagues not to be successful ni masuala ya utawala wa soka bara Afrika hapa wakila michezo wana pia meneja wa huduma za utawala wa wanachama wa FIFA yani FIFA Lego and member associations governance services manager Sara Solemal kwenye kongamano la kibiashara la soka barani Afrika mwezi huu alisema kwamba in terms of transparency it's recommended by FIFA to each national federation to display their financials at their websites now there is a need to increase diplomatic strategies synergies by the collaborative approach between african governments and member associations to fifa and by the use of the court of arbitration of sport to solve disputes but asam tumekuwa kwenye ban ya fifa kwa mwaka mmoja karibu miezi miwili kabla kuondolewa alipoingia eh, waziri wa michezo ababu na mwamba how do you intend to improve our football governance in our country to make sure that in the future we don't get to hear or get again to see a fifa ban laid on us you know we have a big problem unajua kuna mtu aliniambia zamani kwamba kuna kuna vitu ambazo unaweza ku change na kuna vitu ambao hauwezi kwa hivyo we focus on things you can change sio mhm Pro, tuna problem kubwa that that goes beyond football kenya federation Okay. It's a big problem. Unajua when I compare mi uambia watu the biggest problem what we niambia hey kuna tofauti gani kubwa uh, between the US and Kenya. Mimi the biggest problem mimi naona the biggest difference mimi usema it's it's more of a human nature. Uh-huh. It's a human nature issue. By nature sisi ni corrupt. Unajua ukikukiwa uki, anybody ukimweka in a situation ambao hakuna hakuna uh, accountability ana kuna kuwa na potential ya corruption na na nini na kuna ile saying ya kwamba um, 
you know uk, 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 for example ukiangalia nyumbani tofauti kubwa ya ya, ya, ya hapo na, na ya hapo America na, na nyumbani uh-huh. ni kwamba hapa ukifanya makosa kuna uh-huh. accountability ukiangalia hata president trump former president sio ukimwangalia size ya na kesi ambazo zinaendea kotini ambazo zimemweka kwa tabu sa ingawaje yeye ana lead kwa hiyo nini yake kwa hiyo pati yake yeye ndio front leader by far lakini ukiangalia issue yake zile matendo ambazo alifanya kitambo zinamfuata mpaka sasa hizi analipa deni kwa zile matendo ambazo alifanya problem ya nyumbani ambayo tunao ni kubwa sana namba one ni kwamba ukifika kiwango fulani unafanya makosa na hakuna accountability hiyo ni problem hiyo ni a cultural problem ambayo tunao nyumbani ambayo tusipo solve tuta continue kuwa na problem okay. samia wino haezi ku solve your problem peke yake hiyo ni mm-hmm. kitu ambao ni lazima inchi iendelee fike kiwango ambapo wata wata deal na hiyo issue ambazo kuna systems in place ambazo zita make sure mimi nasema from a national level ambazo mtu akifanya makosa anakuwa ana, anakuwa accountable sasa it comes back to my original point what is the problem uh-huh. the problem ni kwamba huko na federation ambayo by all accounts ni independent meaning that fifa in our protect sio uh-huh. kwa hivyo wakifanya makosa serikali hawezi kuingilia kuwa nini kwa punish kwa sababu serikali ki ikiingilia ikiwa punish <laughs> lazima wawe na proof kwamba kuna makosa kwa hivyo kuna hiyo issue sio kuna level ya independence ya federation number one. alafu kuna hiyo the ministry number two. the ministry wana support federation lakini federation na hawa kui accountable kwa sababu ya hiyo independence through fifa kwa hivyo mimi nasema hivyo lazima recognize the hierarchical order mm-hmm. na independence ya federation from fifa na we make sure kwamba yoyote mtu yote ambaye anachaguliwa katika federation lazima recognize kwamba ni lazima ufanye kazi na federation vile mm-hmm. vile na fifa na vile vile na the rest of the stakeholders mm-hmm. kwa hivyo tu kwa sababu tuna recognize kwamba kuna hiyo independence ya federation for example ukiangalia mambo ya uh, Nick Mwendo for example unajua issues zake na na serikali sio from the previous regime to the current regime alikuwa na case in court kuna some issues kuhusu um, uh, uh, the governance of football Kenya federation ambayo ilikuwa ruled in court na uh-huh. akakuwa found guilty kuna hiyo legitimacy ya football Kenya relation kuhusu their presence in the office uh-huh. mimi nakuuliza wamekuwa found guilty in the court of law uh-huh. and still there is no accountability uh-huh. there is no enforcement of the ruling of court ruling so uh-huh. mimi nakuuliza kama court already zime, zime, zime recognize kwamba kuna guilt zime zime decide kwamba huyu mtu yuko guilty na there's no enforcement uh-huh. how do you go about that so the problem ambayo tunao ni kwamba nikiwa president i recognize all these issues i understand all these issues ndio mimi nasema it is important kwamba uh-huh. we elect people who have integrity because uh-huh. for now we don't have systems in place that punish people who do wrongdoing that's the uh-huh. that's the truth people get away na kufanya vitu really wrong things wewe okay. una historia yako si ndio wewe una historia yako kila mtu mimi nina historia yangu historia yangu is me my history is me Uki, ukiniangalia uangalie historia yangu ni mimi kwa hivyo historia yangu inasema sami amekuwa kifanya vitu hivi ndio kasa hizi Mm-hmm. the best predictor ba, kufu, aba, kwa vitu ambazo za kufanya in the future. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I want us to take a few questions from our audience because pia alikuwa mtoto maswali yao manaki wao ndio washikadau pia wengine manaki pia kana na hayo pia ni kwamba kuna huyu mmoja anaitwa Idris Mwashumba alikuwa ameza kwamba 
Mimi nataka kujua story ya pesa atafanyaje hii ligi players wanaumia kwa kweli. Now I know uh, Sam as a professional and former footballer playing on an empty stomach at the end of the day. It doesn't get better and it doesn't feel well, does it? No, no, no not really. Yeah. Yeah, that's not that's not good. Uh unajua I always say kuna problems, right? Ni kama wewe una kuna ni kama una pipe in a leak, right? Ama kuna problem kwa pipe you block the 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 the, the one leak. And then a lot, another leak happens, you broke another leak. You you block that leak, then another one. Problem here Kenya, you have to address it from the source. Ukiangalia kuna interview moja nilifanya nilipokuja hapa the first two years I came I had an interview nilienda nikai read back um mm-hmm. the ukweli ni kwamba uh, there's nobody nobody can solve the problem of all the players of former players you can even if you tried nikikupatia um uh, let's say I give you 100,000 shillings right in uh, in in Three months or four months, they will go away. Think about it. Unajua, we, whether, it whether it is in football or in life in general, uh, what we need to do is to make sure that people are self-sufficient. You know? So when I was growing up, my mother, just remember, Kwamba, you are popular because you play football. When you are done, you're going to have to figure out how to survive on your own, you know? So the best way to deal with the problems of the Kenya football player, the player, is when they are playing. Establish things that will allow them to live a better life be- beyond football. So we have to educate our footballers now, now when they are playing, and tell them, look, football is going to end provide education, financial education, awareness, um, come up with programs that will provide uh, business education uh, for them so that Wakimaliza, uh, for example, they can take advantage of opportunities like coaching, for example, you know, provide things that will sustain them beyond football. And Bazo, um, you know, they'll give them a life that they don't have to be to 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 beg from people it's very it's very difficult so now the issue of what do we do with the players now about sasawa kona problems right okay. so w- one of the things about i have to give cso walo credit niliona anzisha like a fund for gormaya players and the idea is to start a business i contributed 400000 today to the to the Nino, to the program and the idea is to create a fund about hopefully will create a business or something where the players can be educated and can provide a sustainable living so <laughs> there are no easy answers to current player problems i, I think yeah. untu amba na ambia current players kwamba there's a silver bullet ambao naweza kuasa idea na island me i think we have to come like the infrastructure that I want to create, okay? Mm-hmm. It's a particular mm-hmm. opportunity, a coaching education. So mm-hmm. you can educate the players, then give them a coaching job. And it, it and it will create other opportunities, but they have to be willing to train, the, to, be a, to be available for training because mm-hmm. life doesn't, unfortunately, life is, is cruel. It doesn't always... Mm-hmm. It doesn't always give you the things you want you know you have mm-hmm. to yeah, Kweli. it's difficult yeah Kweli kabisa bwana Sam another person mtu mwingine ambaye ni muhimu sana katika mchezo wa soka ni shabiki na kwa sasa hivi shabiki hawakwendi uwanjani na swali kubwa ni je hama shabiki kuwarejesha uwanjani walivyokuwa hapo zamani miaka ya super sport sasa hivi hawaendi uwanjani wengi kwenye nyumbani tu akitazama ligi za Uingereza na za Marekani na kule Ulaya now the question is how will you bring these fans back to the stadium because we need them in the stadium ndio unajua ni kweli and i came i come back to in the, to your original mm. point yangu unajua sisi tuache hii sense ya entitlement fan anakuja stadium kwa sababu 
kuna kitu inamleta stadium sio uh-huh. uwezi kuambia fan eh hey, kuja stadium kwa sababu unakuja ku support mpira wa Kenya you know it's very difficult kwa hivyo ni lazima sisi to create number one an environment to brand our football uh-huh. especially the premier league lazima to brand to market in such a way alafu to create an entertainment value ambao fan anasema hey this is worth mimi kulipa pesa kwenda kuiona tu, tuondoke na hiyo mentality ya naita entitlement mentality sio ambapo sisi tuko na hii mentality ya corporate world itatupatia pesa serikali itatupatia pesa so, uh, fan atakuja stadium lazima umpatie fan reason ya kuja stadium sio kwa hivyo sisi kama vilabu na kama football kenya finish lazima to create brand na to market our product na vile vile tuweke product kiwanjani ambao inam, inamfanya mtu a, apende kwa kuja ku, kuniniwa kuiona na vile vile akija pale ni lazima tu create an event ambayo inamfanya aondoke nyumbani akuje hapo kuiona kwa hivyo it's up to all of us football kenya federation included to work with clubs to make sure to make market our product well to make to we brand it really well and then obviously we have to work through youth structures to make sure to make develop players ambapo play the kind of football that yeah. will make people want to come all right uh, hapa kwenye comment section uh, cobra jacobs anasema the problem with our soccer is pure leadership corruption has become our culture and our leaders are just watching gilgil inatazama asante sana Odipo Osano anasema the right mind for football sio maneno tu ya kuomba omba bila nothing to offer go for it this may maybe one of the most ignored natural resource minimal investment and outcome may be stunning alafu pia namuona Leonida eh, Omache anasema madam speaker from Minnesota clean anatazama asante sana kutazama lakini pia Phil Ogada anasema the perfect man for the job now some another aspect to talk about is the women's game currently the women's game haijapatiwa kipaumbele sana lakini ni mchezo ambao umekuwa na una uwezo mkubwa tumeona tu juzi Harambe Stalets ikipiga Cameroon ambao wameshi, wamefika finali nne za bara Afrika wa kinadada lakini kuiondoa kwenye awamu ya kwanza na kufuzu kwenye kwenye awamu ya mwisho hata nadhani pia ligi ya wanawake humu nchini Kenya pia haijapatiwa kipaumbele katika dili za kupeperusha michoano hiyo ya e, wanema kwenye Runinga pia haijapatiwa kipaumbele Najua msimu jana ulitoa shilingi eh, laki tano kwa timu ya Gaspo wali, ambao walikuwa nafasi ya pili kwenye ligi ya wanawake nchini Kenya na ukasema kwamba haukufurahikia kuweza kuwa na kama mshindi wa ligi anapatiwa milioni moja lakini nafasi ya pili ajapoa kitu now that was a good sign first of all uh, congrats and uh, keep on but moving forward when you take over the seat what are your plans for the women's game apart from what we've seen in the past Unajua the, the first of all congratulations uh, to the to the women's team for beating Cameroon I think there's a tremendous potential mimi naona uh-huh. uh, kwa hii timu kwa hiyo mpira na wake in general unajua uzuri hapa America ni kwamba mpira na wake ilikuwa mbele ya mpira na wake kwa hivyo mimi nimeona personally the benefit ya mpira na wake mimi nimezoea wanawake kuwa na the same level and in some cases even wakiwa mbele ya, 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 ya wanaume kwa hivyo mimi uh-huh. mpira na wake naichukua very very seriously kuna mimi naona kuna opportunity tunayo ya kuiendeleza sana ya uh-huh. ya kuitengeza wanawake mimi sioni kama wana hawaulizi kwamba anything special wao wana wanataka wawe wawe treated vile wanaume wanakuwa treated wanataka tu equal opportunity kwa sasa bado uh-huh ukiangalia vile mpira na wake ilivyo uh, nyumbani ni kwamba uh, ni, ni hawawi hawapewi equal treatment uh-huh. ile kitu anauliza ni vile mnavyo treat wanaume ndio sisi tunataka mtreat vile vile viwanja tucheze viwanja vizuri kama wanaume utuwe na the same amount of financials maybe uh, not the same amount because numbers don't make uh, are not the same but uh-huh. meaning equal meaning unatuchukuna to treat financially the same way ambao na treat wanaume national teams una to treat the same hiyo ndo wanawake wanataka hawataki wawe treated in any 
special way tunajua kuna kuna challenges ambazo wanawake wana face ambazo wanaume hawana lakini mimi the way i look at it ni kwamba uki enforce easy structures ambazo nasema uki implement them all wanawake wanasema ni kwamba uki implement these structures implement them on an equal playing field kwamba wanawake na wanaume ukifanyia wanawake wanaume hivi unawafanyia wanawake the same thing Uh-huh. wanataka tu equal opportunity hiyo ndio wanawake uh-huh. wanataka kwa hivyo mimi what i promise is kwamba nikiwa president of football kenya federation the women are not going to be treated any different from men the opportunity will be the same everything will be we will do for men will be done for women as well because that uh-huh. is very important for me yeah all right uh, now another thing that i want to know about you as an incoming president ni swala la kuweza kujua labda katika timu taifa zetu za Kenya kinadana pia kwa wanaume Harambe Stars na Harambe Starlets what are your plans in terms of forming a formidable and a, a more consistent and strong national team apart from where we are at the moment kwanza nipatie uchambuzi wako ufupi where are the two national teams are at the moment and what are your plans in terms of making them consistent because the fans outside there wanalia kwamba oh timu ya taifa kidogo atufanye vizuri tunapiga pigwa na South Sudan kidogo katika michuano ya kufuzu atuko kwa vizuri inakuwaje wewe oh, una mipango ipi katika timu zetu za taifa labda katika ukuaji wa Atlanta kutoka chini hadi kuja juu unajua kuna two problems kuna the current situation the current situation kuna vitu ambazo tunaweza kufanya sasa hizi based on the current situation kuna problems ambazo tunaweza ku solve sasa hizi lakini the, the reality ni kwamba tukitaka kukuwa na a permanent strong team national team whether it's on the women's side ama ni, 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 ni on the men's side ni lazima ianze from the grassroots tujenge strong academies ambazo zita zita form create good players alafu how good players are like part of the national team and then consistently tutakuwa na strong national team ambayo itakuwa ikicompete at the highest level so hiyo ni a long term thing sio kwa sababu sasa hatuna strong academies hatuna hiyo foundation ya academies ya kuweza kujenga strong national team tukikubaliana kuomba consistent consistency of performance at all levels whether wanaume au wanawake inahitaji kuomba tuwe na a strong foundation na hiyo strong foundation hatuna itatubidi tujenge number one. number two, kuna zile vitu ambazo unaweza kufanya saizi ambazo zitasaidia national team saizi. Namba na mimi nasema kitu ya kwanza ni lazima uwe u, 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 very very um, careful in the selection of the national team coach. Ni ni a very 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 important position kwa sababu national team coach ni mtu ambaye anakuja hapo ana very short time mimi ni coach ni ama very highly licensed coach niko very active in coaching na mimi najua kwamba uki, uki bring a national team together una, una bring people from different styles of play uh-huh. from different paths alafu hauna muda mrefu sio kwa hivyo tactics ni important people management ni important is a level preparation is important so what can fkf do number one, ni kwamba we make sure kwamba kuna very good management Ma, what do i mean by that ni kwamba we identify the right players why mm-hmm. we identification pro, process ni very very important sababu mm-hmm. kuna many kenya players who are playing different parts of the world so identifying the players is key number two, ni ku make sure nimesema coach ambaye anaweza ku manage those players uh, man manage them or woman manage them and be very tactical in terms of adjustments to in games na ku make sure and understand how his or talent sort of will come together and play as a team in a short time then the mm-hmm. third one ni the federation ku make sure friendly ambazo tunacheza leading up to his or match ambazo ni za muhimu ni meaningful friendlies manakin inaimanisha kwamba tunacheza na timu ambazo zinaweza kutupatia um, 
good opposition. And I've recognized other management issues related to problems about the size of now. We want to make sure come players work on allow on a particular allowances on time. Players wanna wanna go flown on time uh, mm -hmm. to 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 the to the place where they need to be. So yeah. short term is on your video to as a kufanya. Long term to kitaka kufanya vizuri in a sustainable way, ni lazima tuena very good infrastructures in place that feeds into the national team. So there's two issues. One you may address based mm -hmm. on our current situation. Now the other one about is very super important which addresses a much more sustainable, you know, uh, uh -huh. uh, yeah, in the long term, yeah. Uh -huh. Kuna huyu hapa Fabian Mwiti, nafikiri umemjibu kwa uh, maongezi yetu kwa muda mrefu. Nafikiri hii sehemu ya pia kwamba je, talanta zinazochipuka na kupotelea vijijini atafanya vipi kuhakisha kwamba wanaonekana na kipi atafanya tofauti na watangulizi wake kuhakisha kwamba soka letu linarejea kwenye hadhi ya kimataifa. Hii pia umemjibu lakini hii katikati hujaweza kujibu labda uweze kumwambia je talanta za uchipuka na kupotelea vijijini utafanya vipi kwa kwamba wanaonekana pia ndio hiyo swali mzuri mzuri sana mimi mm -hmm. plan yangu ni hivi ni niko na naona kwamba every session especially grassroots ni muhimu sana mm -hmm. so uh, watu wengi nyumbani kwa sasa ukiangalia vijana naanzisha naanzia uh, yo now go back to um, uh, development kwanzia youth program um, pira vijana yeah. you and your root problem right ukiangalia size to live yo vijana wengi wanaondoka shuleni wakiondoka shuleni wafike nyumbani saa zimekwisha sio hawezi ku kunini kucheza village tulivyokuwa tukifanya zamani kwa hivyo lazima ufanye uh, uwe ufanye program ambayo ina involve schools hiyo ni very important Kwa hivyo plan yangu ni ku work with the Ministry of Education already work on established program size uh inaitwa competency based curriculum ambayo ina ina inawaruhusu shule zi zianze hizo program zao za mpira sasa plan yangu ni kuanza uh, league katika ile level ya grassroots level katika every county uh -huh one level itakuwa ni one league itakuwa ni through schools mm -hmm. another league itakuwa ni through ni naisema pre academy premier so itakuwa ni schools league na academy na, na kutakuwa from there wachezaji watachaguliwa from those schools or academy ambao watachezea county level teams mm -hmm. alafu from there kutakuwa na regional teams kwa hivyo mm -hmm. CIT wachezaji wa national team peke yao alafu hizo county teams zitakuwa zinacheza tournaments at the county level competition mm -hmm. alafu kutakuwa na wachezaji ambao watachaguliwa wacheze regional level vile mm -hmm. vile kutakuwa wachezaji from those regional teams ambao watacheza ka national level kwa hivyo kila mtu regardless of where amba, where unacheza kuanzia from the very grassroots level utakuwa nafasi ya kuchaguliwa in the county team through his own in Yozako, playing mm -hmm. for kwa hiyo league ya shule ama league ya academy ambao mimi mm -hmm. naita na premier league ya yeah. academy Nam. premier league sala mwisho hapa kwa mashabiki ni lake mke lake Idris Mwashumbe anaweza kwamba how will he improve players welfare so inategemea na nafikiri nimejibu hiyo swali baadaye okay kuna player welfare ambao retired soccer players ambao nimesema it's very complicated mm -hmm. na tunawasaidia from the standpoint of kuanzisha programs ambazo tunaweza kuwasaidia kwa haya whether it's coaching or administration through the structures ambazo tuta create hiyo ni former players mm -hmm. the current players Unajua the current players wanachezea vilabu sio kwa hivyo mm -hmm. it is the responsibility ya vilabu to make sure um kwamba players wako accountable sisi as a federation kazi yetu ni ku hold the clubs accountable number one. number two ni ku support clubs kuwapatia opportunity ya ku succeed kama saizi unasema lack of transparency football kenya federation wanapata sponsorship 
wana make secretive au shiana club mimi sio ni kama football federation ina inawapatia vilabu enough share of zile pesa wanapata so the problem ambayo tu now comes back to ukitaka kuinua hali ya mpira wachezaji ni lazima uwe na pesa sio so ni kazi ya federation kwenda kutafuta sponsorship to make sure wako na sponsorship ambavyo ultimately watashare na club vile vile ni kazi ya federation kusaidia clubs waende wa pate sponsorship kwa hivyo tukinua hali ya mpira kwa jumla whether it's the league uh, to create a sense of ile credibility kwa federation pesa zitakuja ambazo zitaenda zita also go back to the players kwa hivyo mm-hmm. as a federation accountability is important transparency is important ulisema governance good governance ni muhimu when you mm-hmm. do all those pesa zitaingia mm-hmm. working with club at the club level to make sure kwamba umewasaidia vile ni muhimu sana pia Aha, Lukachi, Lukachi Kadocha anasema what is your post career plans for players besides coaching specifically pension schemes as a fallback uh, after retirement nafikiri ameshajibu hii kama umejiunga nasi kwa sasa unaweza kurefer baadaye tukimaliza basi ifanya ku rewind unaweza kupata jibu maana yake ilianzia katika awamu ya kwanza ya kipindi cha walk with Sagini jukwa la magwiji Sam as we wind up I want to one final question from me uh, because umetaja kwamba kidogo katika shirikisho hili kwenye mambo maswala ya uchaguzi kuna maswala ya ya ya, ya ufisadi corruption imejaa sana na kwamba lazima tukutue na uwazi katika uchaguzi now some heading into the elections come next year how confident are you the elections will be free and fair i'm not confident and that's end of my problem i don't have any confidence in the football kenya federation to host elections period now as long as the football kenya federation is involved in the hosting of the, of the, of the elections what a manipulate election number one, mi naambia size vile nasikia ni kwamba hawataki kufanya elections ni in february wanataka wais waisongeze mbele vile nasikia ni kwamba ni kumwendwa ana, anasema ti kwamba kwa sababu covid ilifanyika atitamia yake inafai in 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 uwesongezwe with one more year the only place una vitu kama hizi zinashangaza sana ruto tamia yake ilikuja and no way in the world do you hear things like that so one kuna hiyo issue ya wanataka kuongeza tamia yao it doesn't make sense number two, kuna hiyo issue ya ya ku harmonize football kenya federation na the sports act kuna hiyo issues hiyo ni lazima itafanyika sio kwa hivyo mimi sina confidence yao mimi nataka wa commit to a date najua si sababu na muomba alisema elections ni february lakini mimi vile ninavyosikiza ni kwamba hao wanataka why push to december of next year alafu ongeze hiyo term ya 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 nick mpaka hiyo december so hiyo ni lazima tu we guarded against number two, uh, wanataka kuzuia watu kama sisi kurani elections kuna kitu inaitwa electoral codes hiyo electoral codes ndio maana ndio mahali wanaficha uchafu zao hapo wanaweka zile rules ambazo zinaba watu kama sisi kuran for elections unajua wanaweza kuweka chocheti ambazo wanataka as long as iko voted through na members wao wakitaka leo wanaweza kusema wanaweza kuad anything wana wakisema lazima uvai siruari ya blue socks nyekundu itakuwa up to them you know na chochote wanaweza kuweka hapo wataweka kwa hivyo ni lazima tujichunge sana kwa sababu wao jamaa hawa jamaa tusipo chichunga wataweka hizi vitu alafu watu ambao wako na qualifications kura mimi nimechezea national team nimechezea Gor Mahia okay mimi nimezaliwa nyumbani can you imagine a jamaa anasema ti mtu kama mimi siko qualified to run for election nimekuwa involved in football for many years to come sasa wanasema ti it is ridiculous ndio nasema kwa hivyo sisi sote lazima tuwe vigilant 
to insist kwamba elections lazima ifanywe February number mm -hmm. one. number mm -hmm. two, to insist kwamba hawezi ku lock some people like us from yeah. running for that elections and number mm -hmm. three, lazima we make sure that the elections is run in a way that is fair mm -hmm. it is very important dear yeah. All right, another question here that is coming in a bit late from Odipo Osano, and I think you've answered this uh, major part of a convo. Lakini like swala kila mwishoni lomui musana sana kwamba basics for a grassroots football club, basic for a grassroots club, include balls, field spaces, officiating costs. How will it facilitate startup clubs to grow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very important. I think iyo ni kitu ni mfikiria sana. When I do a grassroots grassroots clubs need the support of the federation especially with basic things kama hizo hiyo mimi naona ukweli ni kwamba vitu kama balls i really believe kwamba we can start a campaign ambazo zita bring in very many balls to where balls should not be an issue unajua mtu akiniambia kwamba we are having problems with balls unajua mimi i grew up nilikuwa tunacheza na zile mpira za nini tunajicha hiyo yenye karatasi tunafunga jola but in this day and age, mtu kuniambia kwamba we don't have balls is mind boggling. A lot of the problems to nazo size me na kuambia sagini ni our own problem. They are self made. Si ati kwa sababu mtu atuna uwezo, ni kwa sababu tumejiletea wenyewe. Kwa hivyo hizo ni vitu ambazo tunaweza ku solve. Tukiwa na watu waaminifu a lot of the problems tunaweza ku solve people who care about football. Ndio. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. asante wa kutenga muda na kuzungumza nasi kwenye jukwaa hili la magwiji bwana Sam Owino. Mimi kwangu kama askofu mkuu michezo ulimwenguni na kutakila laheri katika uchaguzi wa mwaka kesho mwezi Februari. Ma, inshallah majali waifanyike kama ulivyosema kwamba lazima ifanyike mwezi Februari kwa hiyo na kutakila laheri katika uchaguzi huo ifikapo mwezi Februari mwaka ujao asante kutenga muda na kila laheri pia katika kalimu yake ya michezo kule Marekani see you soon in Kenya i hope haya asante sana na shukuru pia pia ni sema asante kwa mtazamaji ulikuwa hapo kuanzia mwanzo hadi mwisho kipindi hiki cha jukwaa la magwiji ndani ya walk with sagini live umekuwa nami Jason Sagini askofu mkuu wa michezo ulimwenguni kama ilivyo ada michezo ni yetu sport ni sisi usahau kwamba siku ya Jumatano tutakuwa hapa tena hewani kwa kipindi kingine cha jukwaa la mashabiki Jumanne ni kipindi cha kuongezea soka la Kenya hasa ligi kuu ya Kenya na pia timu ya taifa ya Kenya ambayo leo imetangaza rasmi kwamba itakuwa inacheza mchezo wa kirafiki dhidi ya Urusi ifikapo siku ya tarehe 16 Oktoba mwaka huu katika taifa la Uturuki hayo yote ni siku ya Jumanne katika kipindi cha gumzo la FKFP na leo sasa hivi ni sema asante lakini nakutakia usiku mwanana kwaheri mm.